Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, FI18 was an eventful year for Grasim as we accomplished notable milestone. The first and major milestone achieved was Azbilla Nuo merger with Grasim, which became effective from July 1st. The second milestone achieved was the listing of financial services business as Adit Billa Capital in the, in the Indian Stock Exchange as per the scheme of arrangement. Adit Billa Capital got listed on September 1st. We thank all the shareholders of Grasim for bestowing their faith on us and supporting us during the merger and listing process. In line with our strategy of growing the Viscose business, we acquired the right to operate and manage the VFI business of Century. Our chemical business recently commissioned caustic soda and web products facility at Vilayat. To fulfill our growth objective, we have expanded our business organically. The Vilayat expansion will strengthen our leadership positioning and improve our chlorine web production portfolio. Let me now focus on key milestones achieved by our cement and financial services business. Ultratech acquired 21.2 million tons per annum cement capacity during the year and has successfully improved the capacity utilization of acquired assets. Our asset management business has improved its ranking to number three from four after steadily gaining market share. Strong operational performance reported by our business is visible in our financial performance are also milestone because some of these are historical numbers. In FY18, at a standalone level, we surpassed rupees 15,000 crore in net revenue, rupees 3,500 crores in EBITDA, and around 2,000 crores in PAT. On a like-to-like -like basis, after removing revenue and EBITDA contribution of ABNL business at the standalone level, the FI 18 revenue and EBITDA are higher by 30% and 14% year on year. At the consolidated level for FI 18, we reported net revenue, EBITDA and PAT in excess of 55,000 crores, 11,000, around 11,000 crores and around 3,000 crores. The revenue, EBITDA and PAT are reported for FI 18 at a standalone level and consolidated level are highest ever in last 70 years of corporate history of the company. Strong operational performance of VSF and chemical business have led to better financial performance at a standalone level. Both these businesses reported highest ever production and sales in FI18. Let me take you through some of the key highlights for Q4 FI18. Our standalone business reported Yet another quarter of impressive performance. For Q4-18, at a standalone level, Grasim reported net revenue at Rs. 4,600 crores, EBITDA at 947 crores, and PAT excluding exceptional item of Rs. 219 crores, which is largely on account of stamp duty payments towards the merger of ABNL and Grasim at Rs. 526 crores. On a like-to-like -like basis, after removing the revenue and EBITDA contribution from ABNL businesses from the standalone, the Q4 revenue and EBITDA rose by an impressive 26% and 35% YOY. We have a strong balance sheet and robust free cash flow. For FI18, our standalone business generated a FCF of rupees 400 crores post capex of around 2,000 crores. Our strong balance sheet and robust FCF generation at the standalone loan level can take care of over a billion dollar capital expansion program without an impact on the financial ratios. The company has embarked on a capital expansion program for VSF and chemical business. The board has evaluated the expansion of caustic soda and new chlorine web and has approved in principle for investment of around 1,000 crores. VSF demand is on firm footing. In FI18, 
the business reported record production and sales volume and has successfully overcome GST challenges and the aftermath of demonetization. The domestic demand is on a strong growth trajectory driven by market development efforts under LIVA initiative. The domestic sales volume have grown by 22% in last two years. The number of LIVA tagged garments witnessed a phenomenal rise up 10 times in last two years to 30 million in FY18. In Q4, production and sales volume were impacted by delay in regulatory approvals for enhanced capacity post debottlenecking. We have now received the approval for Vilayat and Karaj, leading to an increase in nameplate capacity by 44 KTPA. In FI18, the uptick in realization and better sales volume was impacted by the rise in input cost of caustic soda and sulfur. The power of integrated business model is visible on the robust performance of VSF business against the backdrop of rise in input cost as they are captively produced by Grassi. And going forward, the global price may remain soft as new capacities are commissioning stays internationally. The chemical business performance in FI18 has been outstanding with EBITDA witnessed a multifold increase. The annual EBITDA reported by the business fewer, few years back is equivalent to one quarter of FI18 EBITDA. Caustic soda prices consolidated during Q4 with capacity restarts in China. The domestic demand is driven by Almuna and VSF and other user industries. Chlorine realization was in negative for a considerable period of time, turn positive driven by the demand from the end user industry. The overall business performance of chemical business for FI18 ended on a very good note. The business reported highest ever production, sales, revenue, and EBITDA. The capacity utilization of the business for FI18 was at 94%, higher than the industry capacity utilization of around 80%. The caustic soda business witnessed a rise in input costs led by power and salt rates in the current year. Cement sales volume are up 29% to 19 million tons, revenue up by 34%, on YOY basis to rupees 9,421 crores and EBITDA up by 20% to rupees 1,887 crores for Q4. The operational performance of JP assets improved significantly led by rise in average capacity utilization to 75% in Q4, which is similar for the industry. These, capacity achieves, these capacities achieved crash, cash break even in the current year current quarter. The revenue and, and EBIT as per IGAP for Q4 are at Rs. 4,203 crores and Rs. 398 crore for financial services business. The NBFC lending book grew 25% YOY to Rs. 43,242 crores and housing finance book well, uh, grew by two times on YOY basis to Rs. 8,137 uh, crores in Q4. The asset management business moved up to the rank in number three position. The average assets under management are up by 27% to rupees 267,739 crores with domestic market share of 10.75% and equity market share of 9.2% in Q4. I would now hand over the call to Mr. Rajiv Gopal, the global marketing head of pulp and fiber business, for sharing some of his initiative taken by the VSF business on sustainability front. Over to you, Rajiv. Yeah, thank you, Sushir. Uh, good afternoon. In the VSF business, uh, we are looking at sustainability holistically, right from forest to fiber, fiber to fashion, and including the recycling of the final garments, and therefore looking at it in a cradle-to-cradle -cradle approach. The business considers sustainability, the drive that we have on sustainability as a competitive weapon, because 
we feel that this will give us a competitive advantage in the marketplace. We are looking at sustainability of raw materials, which is wood sourcing. Here we are partnering with a leading NGO called Canopy, uh, which, is a co which is supported by all the leading global brands of apparel in the world. Uh, they are ensuring that, or they are auditing, and we are partnering with them to ensure that all our wood is sourced from renewable forestry, sustainable forestry. Similarly, looking at uh, further uh, value chain, which is our fiber manufacturing, we are ensuring that not only are we meeting the norms that are set for by the government in each of the geographies that we operate in, but we are actually now aiming for international norms, which are defined by the EU equal norms, and we are working towards this and making sure that all our operating units will gradually meet these very exacting norms in the years to come. Uh, our products, we are ensuring that we are developing more products which are highly sustainable. For example, the spun dyed fiber that we have, which use far less water and use, and there is a very less effluent discharge in the value chain, uh, is a sustainable product. We are working very seriously on increasing our capacity on lysol fiber, which is a very sustainable product. Uh, we have certifications like Ecotex, Nordic Swan, etc., and USDA, which are ensuring that the products that we use, that we sell to our customers, are biodegradable uh, and more sustainable. Uh, we are also working further down in the value chain with our partners to ensure that uh, they also improve their sustainability credentials. We are looking at traceability very seriously so that the end garment can actually be traced right from forest to the final garment. And all this uh, will provide a competitive advantage to the business. Thank you. Now we can open for the Q&A. Sure, thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Participants who wish to ask questions may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Gunjan Pritiani from J.B. Pongan. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my questions. Um, just a couple of questions. Firstly, on the uh, on the um, chemical business, uh, you uh, you mentioned that there is an in principle approval for thousand crores. Now, any uh, any uh, more clarity on this as to uh, timelines, capacity, how much of it will be captive for VSF? Any any clarity on this? So, Punjan, actually, uh, today uh, the board has kind of, in principle, approved this investment. And uh, we are supposed to kind of go back to board with a little more detail uh, on the capacity. And, and because there is a caustic soda capacity which we are going to add, we are going to add some uh, new chlorine uh, VAP uses. So there is a bit of work which we need to kind of uh, do and go back to board. And then we'll come back to you with a little more detail exactly what we are going to do, what the timing, where is uh, uh, we, are, we are increasing what capacity. Uh, broadly, it is uh, currently we are thinking that capacity would be added at uh, Vilayat, but we want to come back to you with uh, more details uh, maybe on next. So it would be brownfield expansion in Vilayat itself. Uh, that's right. That's right. Okay. And if at all, let's say you get the approval and it's kick-started, when, how long does it take for a brownfield expansion to come on stream? So uh, roughly around 18 months uh, plus minus. Okay. Once you approve and the work kick-starts. Yeah. So okay. I think, yeah. So what what I'm saying is that uh, we need to go back with a little more detail uh, uh, on the broadly one of the one of the things which we are uh, contemplating that uh, Vilayat is one location, maybe realize another location. So we are we are doing a little bit of work thinking through uh, where is the best use of uh, uh, adding that capacity from a company point of view. Okay, got it. And uh, also in the caustic uh, slides, you mentioned that you, uh, after the slight moderation in caustic prices, you uh, expect the prices to again improve. What's the, uh, I mean, just trying to understand, um, these prices have already risen a fair bit. 
maybe you know uh, our english must be a little poor in communicating but what we said uh, or what we were trying to uh, make uh, point was the uh, chlorine uh, prices which were earlier negative is kind of showing some uh, some uh, positive improvement uh, and and second uh, broadly that uh, prices uh, with a uh, good demand in in user industry should remain broadly in this range that's the message we wanted to leave okay but given that the chlorine prices uh, realizations uh, have been positive do you see any risk to incremental capacity additions in the industry so uh, see the chlorine uh, improvement uh, has mainly happened due to the end use sector doing very well so the uh, uh, right now the capacity utilization of uh, caustic is improving because of uh, better utilization of chlorine which is uh, uh, leading to this so we don't see uh, a risk uh, from that uh, that aspect okay um, and just last question on the vsf uh, can you share what's the share of specialty uh, in the vsf and uh, how are the vsf prices uh, trending post the quarter close the, the the share of specialty is about 35% normally but in in case of last quarter because we had to reduce the, our production uh, 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 deliberately so what mm -hmm. we did was we only focus on the high value specialty so that portion remained at 30% kind of a thing and i think once our production is back we will we will start making the other non wons more and in terms of the pricing uh, i think uh, the china prices are now inching up and there is a fair bit of stability there and uh, the the issue is there the, it is helping us two ways the chinese currency has hardened and the indian currency has weakened so same 14000 is much much more in terms of delivered price to us compared to what was one year back so uh, what would be the chinese prices right now 14000 14000 14, 14, 200 to 14300 rmb okay Okay, got it. Thank you so much. And Gunjan, just to kind of for you and for others benefit, this production uh, which we kind of curtailed uh, in in fourth quarter for VSF, just to make sure that you all read it well, uh, we had a rated capacity, and uh, in in uh, earlier quarter we were actually producing uh, at a, at a uh, full full uh, uh, capacity utilization, with the assumption that debottlenecking regulatory approval will will come sometime in uh, quarter three. actually uh, and and the uh, approvals actually have come in in quarter 1 of the of the current fiscal so in the last quarter we had to adjust that uh, production so there there is no uh, issue with the production uh, on the operation but it was more of a uh, approval which got delayed had to kind of cut down our production and which led to some lowering of specialty production as well Okay, got it. And the debottlenecking uh, whole contribution is done now, now yeah, right? This now we have a approval also in place, and uh, the everything has been done. So we have built in that volume now, forty-five thousand tons. Okay, got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. The next question is from Tarun Makija from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, so, firstly, uh, if I look at your VSF uh, segment realization, that's uh, up by more than 20% uh, via via and fourth quarter FY18. Uh, on the other hand, if I look at Chinese VSF prices, they have trended down in the last six months. So, can you and also your special share of specialty has declined. So, can you explain the divergence in You are talking about the VSF segment. You are talking FY18 or Q4. What are we talking? Q4 FY18. So, so no, no. You see, what happens that in the dollar terms, our prices were higher by about six to seven percent. But in the rupee terms, because the currency was 64, it was about three percent, two to three percent increase. Uh, uh, YOY. So that. There's no twenty percent. There's no twenty percent. It is two to three percent. So it's actually 16 percent. If I look at the realization is up in fourth quarter of 2018, and if I look at the Chinese prices, okay. they have traded down as per the uh, presentation. So, Chinese so I want to ask you, the China prices are different than the Indian prices now, because that's what we have been presenting that uh, the, the two do not follow. 
So I think Tarun, one you have to kind of uh, make sure. And I'm, I'm sure were you there in the Vilay uh, uh, presentation when we were talking about? So what we said, what we said that uh, international prices, particularly China and any other uh, market prices, does not really represent what the Indian prices would be. And, and there are a couple of reasons we had articulated. And one of the reasons what we also said in addition to the currency fluctuation, which will happen on a, from a time to time, which is currently the, the situation is, but generally the local demand has been very, very good for VSF business in the, in the country. And that is led by the LIVA initiatives which we talked about. I think in that background, uh, the domestic prices is definitely has a, some reflection of the international price but may not necessarily actually translate in a in a same same uh, way as possibly we would do in our normal math. So the delta Y O is only 2% yeah. of the Indian prices. So, so it is following the same trend. So there is a base level for India different than the base level globally. Okay, uh, understood. Uh, and uh, you mentioned that you have already deep water like 44,000 uh, tonnes. Yeah. Uh, per annum capacity at VSF. So now that would, if I were to assume 8% growth of the Indian sector in VSF, that would be sufficient for your next year's uh, capacity uh, yeah. uh, or next year's requirements. So, so beyond broad, that... Broad, broadly, broadly. But you see, we must still be under pressure. So because the Indian demand is doing very well. I told you it is due by 12% in last quarter. So, in the Q4. Uh, so I think we'll have, we'll be a little bit, uh, but we'll see how to optimize it. As we told you last time, you always optimize the export. So we, we maximize the, the, the domestic servicing and whatever remains the export. So that's what we'll do. Uh, and so your brownfield expansion is scheduled to come in FY21. So could there be a case of again uh, supply crunch or in FY20 as well? Or do you have any plans for further deep water leaking? We are working on a couple of more proposals, but I think uh, they are uh, they are still not formed up because we, the issue is we have to get the the the, the environmental clearances to the public hearing, so it, it has its own cycle. If we are working on some more ideas. So Tarun, the way you should see is uh, uh, clearly one uh, in case if the demand surpasses what we can produce, uh, then we'll play on the export front. So that's one, one lever which we have and we'll try to kind of uh, make sure that domestic uh, demand is fulfilled first. That's our priority because that's where we are seeding market and we are doing various stuff. Okay, okay, understood. Thanks, I'll join back in the queue. Yeah. Thank you. Next question is from Amit Murarkar from Deutsche Bank. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just a uh, couple of questions. Firstly, uh, what was the VFY uh, uh, revenue and EBITDA uh, and volume in the quarter, fourth quarter? One twenty one crores revenue and 29 crores EBITDA. And uh, what would be the volume? So this is only for the century piece. Okay. So 77 crores is a beta for uh, VFI as a, as a uh, standalone line, which would include both uh, uh, the existing wearable as well as century uh, two months uh, uh, for right. the last quarter. Okay. And revenue, uh, comparable revenue number? Uh, revenue. So 11 crores is the VFI revenue for Q4 FI18. 411 11 crores. Ah, sorry, I, uh, that was, I couldn't get the number. What was it? 211 crores. 211, okay. Uh, and and uh, just uh, on uh, Harihar plant, uh, pulp plant, that is. So how do you foresee the water availability going into... Uh, the, the, the water availability this year is good, I think. So we don't expect any uh, disruption by the water. Okay, so you, you think it will last till the monsoon? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are, we are reservoirs are full, and I think we have water for another at least 50 days minimum, so it should not be an issue. It's Okay, sure. I'll come back in the queue if I have more questions. Thanks. And, and directly, Amit, I think uh, as we have been saying that uh, one of the target for us is to consume lower water 
and we are taking a lot of initiatives to reduce the water consumption itself. Uh, and by when do you think uh, that it's efficiency it's things will be effective? It's already happening. So each factory oh. has brought down the water consumption significantly. In fact, we are among the lowest water consumers in the world now in the viscose production. So the the uh, the graphene has the lowest water consumption per ton of viscose in the world. Oh, okay, sure. Understood. Well, thanks. Thank you. Next question is from Pratik Kumar from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, sir, my first question is regarding, uh, I mean, just uh, in, with regards to the previous question asked. Uh, is this uh, 200, uh, you said uh, VFI revenues as 211 crores. Uh, is this for oh, ABNL uh, VFI or like total because this number looks very low because earlier also we were doing 200 crore kind of number. Uh, no, this is for the project. This is for the, this is for the, you know, ABNL VFI for three months. Last century. Right. Right. For sense, so this is. So 211 would be for ABNL VFI and then another 121 for Century VFI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, uh, accordingly, we just uh, if we just back calculate uh, EBITDA per kg for like let's say uh, VS uh, Grasim VSF, it has fallen to some uh, 26 rupees per kg from 30 30 31 kind of range in previous two quarters. So this is purely due to costs or like uh, some product mix change or some domestic, uh, I mean there's some realization pressure. Realization has been higher but because when the production goes down the cost, yeah. So one is the volumes have been low and second the cost of prices have moved up by about, uh, it is 43 percent YOY and quarter on quarter 10 percent. So all input prices as I mentioned earlier is sulfur went up by 80 percent in FY18. Cost went up by 43 percent. So there is 318 crores impact on 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 input cost itself, and Q4 bore the brunt of it. Correct. And on a sequential basis, uh, as I am also calculating or uh, myself, uh, the the prices for Grasim VF, VSF is actually risen yeah. uh, on an average basis. Yeah, that's right. Okay. And sir, uh, this uh, any specific reason for higher other income uh, during the quarter? Mainly because of the treasury gains, uh, which are which were booked during the quarter. Treasury side uh, size also has gone up for us. Treasury size is gone up. MTM gain is there. Yeah. Okay, answer just one last question. Uh, do we also now give uh, chemical segment split that is Grasim as well as ABNL split now uh, yeah. going forward? Going forward, we are not going to share that, but uh, you know, anything we can uh, tackle it offline. You know, if there's anything, any specific requirement you have. Uh, one and the same company, so there is no reason for us to kind of uh, share that. But in any case, if you need any specific uh, plant level uh, operational uh, details, we'll be happy to share with you. Uh, sure, sir. I'll get back to the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Rajesh Lachani from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Sir, uh, if, uh, just looking at the trends for uh, cotton, uh, VSF, and uh, polyester, sir, there is a firmness in the uh, polyester price, and even cotton prices over the last three, four months have gone up, and in fact, they are now trading at much higher than VSF. Uh, so just wanted to understand what's, uh, what's happening uh, on the cotton side and why is VSF prices not trading at a premium? The issue is, uh, you understand, the PSF is going up because the crude prices are going up. The cotton prices are going up because the Chinese stocks are depleting now. They have the strategic stock which they have auctioned now. And in India, there was a lot of, this, this ball boom effect happened, so a lot of crop got, uh, so the yield was much lower. And second, in, in the government policy of MSP, with that 50% increase in the MSP, the cotton prices are expected to go up in India. So in general, the cotton prices like to remain firm. Today, YOY, we are higher than last year. The global price of cotton is higher, so interfiber dynamics, both the fibers are supposed, are going to be higher, so obviously VSF should gain. The only 
derailleur is because of when there is excess capacity coming on stream, people try to uh, panic. So there will be a uh, re-equilibration happens. So sometimes there will be a, uh, a adjustment and then they should re-equilibrate. But fundamentally, there should be a, a, a positive impact on the VSF prices because of the interfiber dynamics. So in fact, if you see, it's actually playing uh, uh, that way only because this whole capacity expansion which is uh, taking place, the prices have not come up, uh, came off. So that's that's uh, in a, in a, in a way is a is a premium which is which is being reflective in the prices. So, so, uh, so just to summarize, so we can see VSF prices going up uh, in the near term, and oh, and sir, also on there are two yeah. variables I told you. From interfiber dynamics, it will be positive, but because of the excess capacity coming on stream, there will be a, 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 a issue of getting market share. So, so players may tend to lower the price. So, it has to re-equilibrate. It won't. We have to see see how it shapes up. And, and third, as, as we repeated, uh, and I want to repeat it, <coughs> because one is the international price, and what, uh, and second is the domestic price. So domestic price is slightly different than uh, than the international price. Although they'll they'll catch up, they'll kind of uh, uh, tag along. But given whatever uh, other things which we are doing in domestic market, <coughs> maybe and currency also will play a bit of a role. So you know, I think there are lots of open uh, loose ends. Uh, you have to kind of uh, there is no uh, fixed answer to this. Uh, this uh, so-called big question, and the but third, uh, yeah, and the third factor is the specialty portion yeah, that absolutely. remains unimpacted. So we have to maximize the specialty, maximize the domestic sales, and see how how it unfolds. Yeah. Okay. And are your views on caustic soda prices going forward? Um, so the, uh, there are some go, going forward. We think that uh, the eco would uh, maintain at similar levels. Uh, what we are seeing. There could be some imbalances uh, on caustic prices, but I think uh, the chlorine prices uh, are positive. So I think uh, the eco prices uh, going forward would uh, uh, be in the same, similar range as what we are seeing today. Understood, sir. Thanks. Uh, that's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Rishabh Parekh from Sunidhi Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi. Congratulations on a solid set of numbers. Just two questions. One is while I appreciate the fact that you know there might be a lot of loose ends regarding the the VSF business, what would be a broad range of uh, margin that we can expect uh, over the next year? Is 18 to 20 percent a fair assumption at the EBITDA level? So I think Rizip, uh, I don't want to repeat what we spoke so far, but you know our intention would be to kind of uh, operate at the at the best uh, uh, margin level. But in, in all fairness, 18-20% uh, is, a, is a good uh, uh, range to kind of uh, expect uh, in, in, a, in a stable market condition. Right. And my second question is, uh, has the impact of uh, China, a uh, little bit of excess capacity, already been seen to a certain extent in Q4? Or do you see it going uh, coming on stream from Q1 onwards? So the way you should see, and, and, and which is where the point we were making that uh, uh, the whole cotton and then the PSF prices, if they are going up, logically uh, the VSF prices should should remain firm. And on the second side, if there is a ex if there is a capacity coming up of on on VSF side, the prices should be uh, at least on a temporary basis should see some some uh, negative reaction. So in hmm. some in some form, it's kind of balancing it uh, balancing it out. And we are seeing uh, some trend because last call, if you if you recall. We did mention that we will see uh, a slightly softening of the price during this uh, Q4. Correct. Uh, and, and, and relatively, if you if, if you see the current result, it has not seen, and that's that's mm -hmm. the implication of uh, uh, whatever is happening in, uh, in, in, the, in the market space. And further, so I would like to add, few capacities did come on stream, but they could not stabilize well. So mm -hmm. this is, VSL is not a simple plant to to commission and, and stabilize. So the mm. capacity which came up on steam in November and December has still not stabilized. Mm. Second is even at the start of the environment compliance is becoming a big issue in China. So a lot of mm. new plants are not able to start because of the environment compliance issue. There's a plant came in Indonesia and they have to start, uh, they have to shut the plant for almost uh, unconditionally. So mm. it's, uh, it's off for almost six to eight months. Mm. What we are finding is all the plants are having an issue on stabilization time. Environment compliance and third is the cost of compliance has become very high. So we mm. believe the break-even for all these people have gone up. So mm -hmm. they, they, they say price cuts is not as much as it was three or four years back. 
Mm-hmm. All these factors will bring a new equilibrium in the market. Mm-hmm. And you have to wait and watch. But we believe we are. I mean, I, you use the word new sir. No, I don't think there is an issue like this. I think yeah. It's a pretty okay kind of a situation. Yes, we have to. We have to see how it unfolds. But fundamentally, we are st- the cost part is we have to make sure we are right on the cost side. We have added capacity that should give us some extra uh, revenue. So I think it should not be as bad. Yeah. Right, sir. So that is very helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder once again to our participants that you may press star and one to join the question queue. Next, we have a follow-up question from Pratik Kumar from Antique Stock Broking. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, hi, sir. Th- thanks for the follow-up. Uh, sir, my first question uh, is uh, regarding this Q on Q realization increase, uh, which we have witnessed in BSF segment. So, is this because of uh, um, because of higher domestic mix, higher specialty fiber mix? Uh, was that uh, not very clear uh, because global uh, we know that domestic is independent of exim uh, export realizations but uh, why are increases there specifically due to higher domestic mix you are, you are right the domestic mix was very high we did 83% domestic 17% export the first quarter was 69% last year was 69% domestic so we have slowly we have gradually taken from 69 to 83% over the four quarters so I think that has been a big, big value driver. Secondly, as I mentioned to you, our specialty realization is very good. The, the the premium we got over gray on was twice what we got last year. So the, those these two factors added to the better premium. So quarter uh, year average was 75 percent for domestic, right. but we exited at 83 percent. That's right. That's right. And if you so that should probably uh, remain 80 percent plus in like 19 onwards. Uh, that should be the your oh, that would be your target, I guess. As we speak, the domestic demand is very robust. Why it became 83 or also because I, I had less capacity available. In, in this quarter, I have more capacity, so I have to export more. So what, what I can assure, say is that the, the domestic demand is robust and will continue. Percentage may change depending on what I produce. So because the, okay. the, the, the surplus will go to export. Okay. Uh, and sir, uh, this, uh, about this negative uh, chlorine realization trending towards positive, so is this after a very long time this has happened or uh, I mean uh, how, what is the sustainability of uh, this positive chlorine realization towards the end of the quarter and how is it in the like, current quarter? So it's happening after almost uh, six to seven years. We are witnessing this positive uh, prices after a very long time. That's mainly because of the end use sector which uses uh, uh, chlorine they have expanded. So uh, we, we do feel that uh, the, the going forward, uh, the, it, it's possible that, uh, uh, you know, the chlorine will remain at this territory, in this territory. Now, I think important point which Raj earlier made was that issue realization uh, you should should actually keep in mind. So maybe, you know, uh, we had earlier negative realization from chlorine side. Now we are seeing bit of a positive. Uh, at the same time, uh, Caustic, which, which we had seen a good run uh, in, in last year or so, uh, maybe even if there is a bit of a drop there, uh, theoretically, yes, you should, uh, should be on, a, on the current range. That's how you should you should see. Okay, and sir, uh, just one last follow-up on uh, VSF capacities globally. So uh, there was this, we understand there was this 1 to 1.2 million ton of VSF capacity supposed to come globally. So despite, and because of this stabilization and compliance cost issues which you mentioned. Uh, so what is the quantum of capacity which have come now in 1Q or a 5 months calendar 18? See, like I, I'll tell you the capacity have come but they have not impacted the market so far. So they are still in the stabilization phase. What we we have kind of estimated that oh, during the full year, against uh, a million ton, I think about half a million ton is what will hit the market, will impact. So the impact for the year will be about half a million ton. That's all will flow into next year, based on the phasing. So this panic um, price reaction generally happens ahead of capacity rollout only? Um, what happens, you see, it's a, it's, a, you have to, it's a game of patience. So what happened, the spinners th- thought that the price will go down, so they just stopped buying for some time. When they stopped buying for some time, the Chinese prices started coming down. Then the VSF guys kind of told them, that, look, below this level we cannot go because there are breaking ones that change. So when they did not uh, react, automatically the prices start holding. So I think it's a 
market has to equilibrate. The all and there will be new normal achieved in this market. Let's see how it comes. Uh, okay, sir. Thanks. Sir. Very useful, sir. Thank you. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. Participants in the call, if you have any questions at this time, you may press star and one. No further questions. I'd like to hand the conference back uh, to Mr. Sushil Agarwal for closing comments. Thank you, everyone, for participating. And uh, our investor uh, communication cell will be uh, taking any specific question. If you have, you can connect with us on live, uh, offline with uh, Romi Talwar at a group level, Sakesh Shah at a company level. Thank you so much. Thank you.